Hello my dear tech friends. Today I'm going to show you how to do an upgrade of OpenWRT and not only that but I will show you how to do a resize of the disk image. So after the upgrade process not only you will keep the configuration files which seems crucial to most environments but uh, even for devices like an x86 where you can have really big disks like SSDs uh, or maybe a virtualized OpenWRT device which can of course have a much bigger disk size than the common MIPS based access points or SOCs. The x86 image of OpenWRT actually is 120 megabytes of size and for most people this might be enough actually because OpenWRT is very humble but actually I need a little bit more. Just recently, on February 18th, a new version of OpenWRT actually appeared, 21.02.2, and I would like to show you how the upgrade is done in a full process. This is my current system. It's not the most recent one, as you can see, and I would like to upgrade it. I made some minor modifications to the configuration. As you can see, there is a VLAN device uh, on the bottom. This current image actually is uh, at the original size, but my hardware is able to process a bigger disk image size, actually. So what we are going to do next is downloading the image. We will be using the extended for combined image because I know how to resize the extended for file system. I do not know how to do it with the squash FS, if you do, please leave a comment. Here is the downloaded OpenWRT file and we will decompress it. Let's have a look at the information of the image. It is of type RAW and it's 120 MB. And now we will resize the image itself to 2 GB or to 2 GB actually and you can change it here if you like it to be even bigger. Next we will create a loop device because we cannot directly modify the partitions of the file. So we need to create a loop device. We will this time let's say 25 over here and now we need to do part probe to reread the partitions of this very loopback device and now I'm I and now I will be using gparted because I think it's the easiest. If you do not have a GUI and need to do it on the command line you can use fdisk as well but it has uh, some more steps because you would need to run fdisk and print the configuration of your partitions. Remember the second partition starting block delete the second partition, create a new second partition, again with the same start starting block as before, but the ending block will be different as the partition size needs to be bigger. Then write it, quit fdisk, run file system check on the partition. No, uh, first of all, first you need to do part probe again of the lo loop device. Then you need to run the file system check on the second partition and then you, and then you need to resize the file system. But gparted is being a little bit easier on that one because it is doing every st everything I said, what you needed to do with, with fdisk, like that, all right? And now we can take a look at what it looks like afterwards. This looks just fine as the size of the second partition actually now is 2 gigabytes. And now we can delete the loop device and we remain with the new. We can also do fdisk on this file. And even this file is now showing a partition size of 2 gigabytes. So this file we can now flash to our device, but we need to compress it once, once again. And then go back to the web interface and 
do the upgrade process. Here is our web interface and we will now go to flash new firmware image and browse to the new file, which is small because it's compressed. And we will keep settings and also a list of the current installed packages. The second option is quite weird to me because it's it's uh, somewhat new but I actually don't know what to do with this file. I mean it leaves a file in Etsy backup install packages txt but I don't see any way of using it. So this is a sad story because this is one of the biggest downsides I see of OpenWRT and the process of upgrading a device. Uh, since you would like not only to keep your configuration, of course, but you also would like to keep your packages. And uh, this video will not make a focus on keeping the packages, but this one is only about keeping the configuration and at the same time keeping or growing the disk size. I think I will be making another video about keeping the packages, but I'm not quite sure right now what the best method is. I think there is no really good method so far. So we have to work another way. In my very case, I actually do Ansible for my production environment devices and the Ansible collection I wrote myself. I will also leave a link to a video where I describe my Ansible collection for OpenWRT. And with that collection, you can reinstall, I mean, you can install packages by naming them for your hosts. And this is the way I solve it. But I think OpenWRT needs its very own solution. All right, let's have a look. So we can now see that the new version is installed. And we also see that the root file system is much bigger and we can work with it. All right, that was the whole process. I hope I could give you an insight on how to improve the upgrade process a little bit. And if you liked it, of course, leave a thumbs up and also subscribe if you like. And I really hope to see you one more time next time. Bye bye.